surrendered, desiring the blood of Christ to cover us, your Holy Spirit to impress upon us, to teach us, to help us to understand the words in which you have inspired to be written. Lord, we want to hear from your throne by your authority only. We may stand on your truths. Lord, there is so much evil going on in this world. And day by day, we are getting more and more homesick to be in the peace of where you would want us to be. You long for us to be. Magnify yourself this day, we pray, in all things. In Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we are going to be continuing a very important topic, a topic which I fear has been misunderstood and in many ways not given its due right. subject today to be given skill and understanding. As we begin today, we're going to review the first messages, the first message of the first angel, focusing still on the first portion of it, to find out if we are firmly grounded in what God has given as his present truth. Revelation 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell upon the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. This angel comes with what authority? Heaven. Heaven's authority, yes. What does the angel possess? The everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel. How did the everlasting gospel come to be? Preach. This is a review, so we should know this. From the foundation of the world. How did it come to be? Ellen White, Australia, Australasian Union Conference Record. The Godhead was stirred with pity for the race. <clears throat> Who designed the gospel, everlasting gospel? The Godhead. The Godhead. 
Continuing the quotation. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit gave themselves to the working out of the plan of redemption. Amen. So what does the everlasting gospel contain? What does the everlasting gospel contain? The, um, the everlasting covenant. The, Father, Son, and the everlasting gospel is not directly exactly the same as the covenant. The covenant is a contract between the Godhead of the universe who foresaw, foresaw the sin and falling of humanity into sin. Therefore, they found it necessary to be involved in the redemption of humanity. The matter must be established by two or three witnesses to be preached into all the world, not respect to race, language, or anything that Satan has brought into the character of man that segregates us from each other. Verse 7 of Revelation 14, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. Amen. And this is where we are going to begin today. God's judgment. The first angel declares, is come. Not will come, not has come, but is come. Therefore, it would behoove us to know what it means exactly that God's judgment is come. And exactly when did it begin? Last week we found the powerful connection of the, of the heavenly sanctuary and the judgment of God as seen in the vision by Daniel recorded in chapter 7 of Daniel. We left with the understanding of Daniel's dilemma concerning the vision of Daniel 8.14. So the question remains, what was Daniel's, what was Daniel's dilemma? Let's read the verse again, Daniel 8.14. He said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So, what is Daniel's dilemma? Didn't have any time. Okay, it was, it was 2,300 days was sitting there with no beginning and no right. ending. Right. All he knew is that the sanctuary was to be cleansed 2,300 days. He didn't know when that started. He doesn't know when it would be ended. He just knew that at the end, the sanctuary would be cleansed. Mm -hmm. What did Daniel do with this dilemma? Did he moan and groan over the fact that he couldn't figure it out? He was sick. Okay. He was sick if he did. Daniel 8.27. Let's read it together. And I, Daniel, fainted... <clears throat> and was sick certain days, and afterward I rose up and did the king's business and was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. In other words, Daniel was a little taken back by this vision, this confusion of the vision, and he shared it with others, and no one around him that studied with him with the scriptures could, could understand what God was trying to tell Daniel in this vision. The last three words tell the story. None understood it. Now I don't know if today we ought to learn from Daniel. So many times we get so high and mighty that we know what we're learning and so we study for ourselves and we don't converse or study with others. But Daniel was given a vision 
did not understand the vision, so he discussed it with his closest friends as they were studying the scriptures. Yet even them, none could understand it. Then, with close study of Jeremiah, we go to Daniel 9, verse 2. In the first year of the reign of Daniel, of, of, in the first of his reign, that was called Darius, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And, Dan, and Daniel verse 3, 9, 3, And I set my face unto the Lord God, seat by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Now this prayer, we need to understand something. Daniel was really focused on what he had seen of this 2300 days in the cleansing of the sanctuary. He began to seek the Lord in prayer, fasting, praying. It is interesting to note that many respected theologians of our pioneers of Adventism places this prayer of Daniel 9 at the exact same time when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. Daniel become greatly concerned of in what he knew was a spiritual condition of God's people. Like in Daniel's day, we also need to be praying and take time in prayer before our Lord and Father in heaven when trials are buffeting against our paths. But why did, why did this bring Daniel to great concern? You see, he'd already learned that 70 years he found was soon to end. And this vision he received from the, from the angel declared 2,300 days and then the sanctuary would be cleansed. The two didn't fit. What sanctuary did Daniel first understand this to be? The one in Jerusalem. The one in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now we know this for a fact because of the next verses. Daniel was concerned of the relationship of God's people, the Hebrew people in Babylon, to their God. Daniel 9, 5. Daniel says, we have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. We have rebelled, even departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened to thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings and to our princes and to our fathers and to the, all the people of the land. Daniel is not pointing his finger at God's people without identifying himself as just as guilty as the entire captive nation of Israel. But even though he was not guilty, he was identifying himself and accepting the guilt. Yeah. Verse 7. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee. But unto us confusion of faces as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to all of Israel that are near and that are far off throughout all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass they have trespassed against thee O Lord to us belongeth confusion of face our, to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. 
verse 10. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. To walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Here is another point to understand. Though Daniel, we know, was a prophet ordained of God, he was not claiming that title for any favor with God. He was identifying himself with the common. The common man of Hebrews, he was identifying himself with them, with those that have been doing wicked in Babylon. Yes. Verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured out upon us. Mm. And the oath that was written, that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Lord, because we have sinned against him. And he spake, confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. Under the whole heaven hath not been done that has been done upon it, Jerusalem. Therefore we can see it. Daniel was looking at Jerusalem, what had been suffered in Jerusalem, the sanctuary completely destroyed. A place of filth. A place where God's name could not be given. Daniel acknowledges all of the sin all of the, God's overseeing of the evil that has been brought in. Verse 14, he says, Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and hath brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is what? Righteous. Righteous. In all his work what he has doeth. For we obey not his voice. his voice. We need to look at this in the context of us today as spiritual Israel. Seventh day Adventist. Now I don't care what other part of the name you want to use. When you say you're Seventh day Adventist, that, that takes a responsibility because that is spiritual Israel. Amen. And with spiritual Israel, Seventh-day Adventists, there are a vast majority of Seventh-day Adventists today grounding themselves in apostasy, mm. thinking that it is present truth ordained by God. Mm. Others placing man's authority over God and distinctly and cl clearly against the foundation of present truth. Just because today, like in Daniel's day, God has, does not execute judgments against the evil brought in by and into God's professed people does not mean our Heavenly Father is not seeing all that is done. Amen. Retributions of God will soon take place against those who take his name and do lie. Amen. It will come to pass. Yes. Daniel 9, 15. And now, O Lord, our God, hast thou brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand hast thou not gotten thee renowned as, as at this day we have sinned and we have done it wickedly in this verse of Daniel 15 of Daniel 9 we find Daniel's pleading with God after the manner of Moses recorded in Numbers 14 God has brought every individual who surrenders his or her life into God's hands of authority out of Egypt. 
by the blood of Jesus, this work is accomplished even to this day. Amen. Yet let us remember, God does not move by the pleadings of vain glory with motives of ambitions by humanity. But when God's people are jealous for the honor and glory of God our Father and the honor and glory of His name, when we, are, when we as God's people are unceasingly pleading to do the impossible in the man's eyes for the glory of God's name without regard of our own personal benefit, always pleading with God that he does not allow his name to be brought into reproach or blaspheme among the heathen. Amen. It is at this time that it is acceptable before God in Daniel's day and in ours. Amen. Amen. Daniel 9, 16. Oh Lord, According to thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thy anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for our iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Clearly, Daniel is still focusing on where? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And the sanctuary that is what? Destroyed. Destroyed. He sees God's people in Babylon. They are, they've got it good in Babylon. They've got great homes. They are getting wealthy. They are doing just fine in Babylon, even though they are in a captive city. Mm -hmm. Daniel fears that though the 70 years are almost up that God will is trying to tell Daniel you've got another 2300 days before you can get out of the city wow. but praise the Lord Amen even with Daniel trying to understand the vision of Daniel 8 14 because remember, like we said earlier, there's no beginning date and there's no ending date to this point yet. No. Daniel has no idea when it begins and when it ends. All he knows is 2,300 days the sanctuary is going to be cleansed. He doesn't even know what sanctuary God's talking about. No, he thinks yes. it's the one in Jerusalem. Oh, my. Mm. This misapprehension was quickly corrected with the arrival of Gabriel from heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse Amen. 20 of Daniel 9. And whilst I was speaking and praying mm -hmm. and confessing whose sin? Our sin. sin. My sin yeah, and the sin of my people. people Israel and presenting supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God now, before we make one more step further, we must ask a question. Is the vision of Daniel 8.14 in any way closer to be understood by Daniel or us, us today? With just what we've read, is it possible for us to understand Daniel 8.14 yet? No. Not yet. Some have presumed Daniel never connected the sanctuary in Jerusalem to the prophecy of Daniel 8.14. Yet, listen to what Uriah Smith wrote. Daniel Revelation 18.97, page 189. But the burden of his petition was respecting the repairing of the desolations of the sanctuary which lay in ruins. He had undoubtedly drawn the conclusion that at the end of the 70-year captivity came, the time would be for the fulfillment of what the angel had said respecting to the cleansing of the sanctuary at the end of the 2300 days. 
now. He must be set right. And this explains why at this particular time, so soon after the previous vision, instruction was sent to him. Again, has Daniel 8.14 ever been explained or understood? The answer is no. no. Is there any way to determine a beginning or end as of yet in Daniel's eyes? The answer is no. no. Daniel 9.21 Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Now, for those young people who just happened to come in here, praise the Lord, we're glad you're here. How fast is the speed of sound? Is it fast? Can you travel speed of sound? Well, if you get in an airplane that goes fast enough, you can go that fast. How fast is the speed of light? 186,000 miles per second. Now, we know that the gate of heaven is, at, 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 is in the Orion, correct? Which is many light years away. Gabriel is standing at the throne of God, right where Lucifer used to stand. And Daniel's prayer begins to be sent up. And the father says, okay, Gabriel, it's time to go. Now, before Daniel stops praying, Gabriel is beside Daniel, tapping him on the shoulder. Now, I don't know about you, but that's more like the speed of thought yeah. than the speed of light yeah. or anything else. Now that's a powerful God. Amen. To have angels that powerful to travel light years away oh in moments. Be mindful of who you're praying to. Yes. Never think God is not more powerful is not Boy, powerful enough Jesus. to take care of your needs. Hallelujah. Amen. One angel can fly at the speed of your thought to your side. Amen. Amen. And notice Daniel 9 29, 21 is very clear here. That Daniel is making it very clear that the man he saw in Daniel 8, 14 is the same person now standing beside him. Mm. He is also equating and linking together Daniel 8, 14 with Daniel 9. Mm. For it is only the vision of Daniel 8, 14 that Daniel could be referring to because he says the angel that I saw, the man I saw at the beginning of the vision. Right. The whole focus of Daniel 9 and the reason why he got sick in Daniel 8 and the reason why he was studying in Daniel 9 is because of the vision of Daniel 8, 14. Verse 22. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give you what? Skill and understanding. Again, what was Daniel's lack of understanding about? 2, the 2300 day prophecy of Daniel 8 14 uh -huh. 
unto 2,300 days. Verse 23 of Daniel 9. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I come to show thee, for thou art what? Greatly beloved. Greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Amen. Now, Daniel connects it. Now the angel connects it and says, you consider what? Amen. The vision. There's only one vision at this time that has any significance to this conversation between the angel and Daniel. Right. For he is, already has all the understanding of Daniel 2's vision, Daniel's all the way through. Right. He understands all of it, except for Daniel 8, 14. Now, notice the manner in which Daniel, that Gabriel comes, saying to Daniel, while you began praying unto God, your father, Gabriel was given charge from God to give Daniel skill than to give understanding. Daniel was not able to handle the first vision when it was given at the first time because he what? He fainted. Therefore, Gabriel brings authority and power from God's throne to give strength of everything needed so that Daniel would not only know what God wanted to articulate not just to Daniel but to every one of us this very day Amen. Daniel is what greatly favored notice this carefully Daniel did not pray for himself but for all of God's people for the sin he, Daniel, understood as great in the size of God. His petitions were for forgiveness and restoration for the honor of God, his Father, and our Father. Amen. Now remember, let us never forget this. I quoted it earlier from this book, and I'm going to quote again. Let me remind you, with light inspired from heaven by God our Father, confirmed by Ellen White, God's prophet, Uriah Smith wrote in Daniel Revelation, the 1897 edition, these words. Such are the first words the angel utters to Daniel toward imparting to him that instruction which he came to give. Why does he thus abruptly introduce a period of time? We must again refer to the vision of chapter 8. We have seen that Daniel at the close of that chapter says that he did not understand the vision. Some portions of the vision were at the time very clearly explained. It could not have been these portions he did not understand. Therefore, we, we therefore inquire what it was which Daniel did not understand, or in other words, what part of the vision was left unexplained. That part in the vision was four prominent things brought to view. Mm -hmm. You see, Daniel 8, 14 was not the only thing with the, with the vision. We forget this sometimes. Yeah. Daniel 8 had a lot to do with a lot more than just the sanctuary being cleansed. First, the ram. Second, the he goat. Third, the little horn. And fourth, the period of the 2300 days. The symbols of the ram, the symbols of the he goat, the symbol of the little horn were explained. Take note again. 
Daniel was following through the vision of all the earthly powers God had revealed. He knows God's people are in captivity because of the evil done in the name of God. Daniel fainted when the first receiving the vision. Therefore, the angel of God, Gabriel, was given instruction by command to give strength and understanding at the very point of where Daniel had not the ability to gain proper understanding. Mm -hmm. Nothing, however, was said about respecting the time. What time? The 2300 days of Daniel 8, 14. It is in this context why it was easier for Gabriel to begin by saying in verse 24, 70 weeks are de determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. Yeah. 70 weeks are determined. Now, this is where a lot of people in the ecumenical churches start getting really confused because they place understandings improperly in God's Word. The words are determined must be understood from the original language of the writing of Daniel. Not by what man says it is, but what actually it means. Follow this carefully. In the Strong's Concordance, are determined is identified by H2852, a primitive root meaning properly to cut off, mm -hmm. that is, to decree. This is proof positive that it's, it's translated from both Hebrew, Latin, and most important, importantly, the Chaldaic language, all translated to be cut off, not are determined. This is accounted by the offer of Christology of the Old Testament, volume 2, page 301, 1839. This is the very book that Uriah Smith was using to understand this verse. Some may ask, why did the original translators change it to say, are determined? especially when it's obviously written by Daniel as to be read, cut off. Now, first of all, before going any farther, when someone says are determined, that means you can be determined from anywhere, correct? When Daniel says are cut off, the first question you ask is where is it cut off from? That's right. Correct? Right. Right. When you want a, a, a slice of pie, you have you cut it off from the hole. Yes. When you want a slice of bread, you cut it off from the loaf of bread. You're not asking for the whole loaf. You just want to cut off a couple pieces. And so the angel was telling, and Daniel wrote, that 70 weeks are cut off upon thy people. There's a reason for it. We can understand and must give mercy and understanding to those that <coughs> translated the Bible. For they made no significant connection between the 8th and ninth chapters of Daniel. But remember also 
The translators are the ones who placed the divisions and placed the verses and placed all things together the way we have it today. Did they understand Daniel? No, they did not. Let us never forget this. The Bible was translated into what we have today before Daniel was a book that was opened. <clears throat> Daniel, at the time of the translation of the book of Daniel, was done before God said it was an open book. The translators were not able to understand properly the connection between eight and nine chapters where they divided it because they did not have the ability yet to have it open. It was still a sealed book. Therefore, we know today when Daniel wrote, 70 weeks are to be cut off, where was it to be cut off from? What is the proper understanding for it to be cut off from that which it was cut off? Gabriel returns in verse 24 to state this. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. How many things are right there that they're supposed to do? Did you count them? There's six. Six direct aspects for the reason why they were given by God 70 weeks of prophetic time. Given to the whole Hebrew people. Uriah Smith, Daniel and Revelation, 1897, page 191. Before I read this, I'm going to let you know, especially those online, because there are many individuals online that they are thinking that they are reading the 1897 edition on the E.G. White 2008 disc. It says on the disc that it's the 1897 edition, but it is not. Um, for those of you who want more understanding about and proof about this, actually the reality is, is the the book that they claim to be the 1897 edition on the, on the ROM is actually the 1907 edition that was altered by the General Conference after Uriah Smith died. They began altering it less than six months after he died. The one that they are using is actually the one that Uriah Smith's wife altered and republished. It's not the 1897 edition. The only way you can get the 1897 edition is to have one. Either an original one or one reprinted that we do. That is a reality. That is why I put page 191. If you go into the CD-ROM, it will not be on 191. It's on some other page. Long different. There must as Uriah Smith wrote. This. this must, therefore, have been the point which, which he, did not. he did not understand. And as without this, the other portions of the vision were of no avail. He could well say, while the application of this period was left in obscurity, that he did not understand the vision. If this view of the subject is correct, we would naturally expect when the angel completed his explanation of the vision that he would commence with the very point which had been omitted, namely the time. And this we find to be true 
in fact. After citing Daniel's attention back to the former vision in the most direct and emphatic manner and ensuring him that he now come to give forth to bring to come forth to give him understanding in the matter he commences upon the very point there omitted and says 70 weeks are determined upon thy people upon thy holy city let no one not understand the direct and distinction connection distinct connection between the eighth and ninth chapters of Daniel for the connection is made and grounded firm in God's authority. Amen. Now in the 1897 edition, Uriah Smith put up a chart. Can we see that chart please? Thank you. Now I don't expect you to be able to read this down here very good, but when I get a chance I'm going to redo this chart to make it so everything can be seen. We start up here at the beginning, and it goes down back around. We're going to be going through this whole complete chart over the next couple of weeks. This is the very foundational fact, direct point of fundamental faith and Bible interpretation. We must stand and never lose its importance. Gabriel then declares concerning the 2300 day prophecy of Daniel 8.14 saying, No, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be what? Seven, Seven weeks, two score, three score, and two weeks. The street shall be built again, the wall even in what? Troublous, Troublous, times. Troublous times. Gabriel now give the exact timing of the beginning of the 70 weeks, mm -hmm. yes. which is part of the what? 2300 2, days. From the very point of the decree to restore and build Jerusalem. Now, how many decrees were given to restore and build Jerusalem? Three. Three. So how do we know which one is the correct one? Remember, we got to know this. This is very, very important. There is only one that brings authority of complete restoration mm -hmm. of the whole of the Hebrew people from captivity. It is the only as God brings them out of captivity that this 2300 day prophecy can have authority in the counting of time foretold. Yeah. The first decree is recorded in Ezra chapter 1 verses 1 to 4. The decree of Cyrus for the rebuilding of the house of God in 536 BC. Yeah. But guess what? Mm -hmm. Nothing else was in the decree just to build the house of God. Did it get built? No. Nope. No, it didn't. Did they start? They tried. They tried. They started. But that was it. The second decree is recorded in Ezra 6, 1 to 12. This decree was pronounced by Jarius for the protection of the work being done, which was being hindered, given in 519 B.C. Almost 20 years later. The third and last decree is recorded in God's Word in Ezra chapter 7. This, it is the final and complete decree by Xerxes in 457 B.C. This decree again was complete because of the funds were given in unlimited portion. Now, I don't know about you, but I would love a blank check written by the government. <laughs> because you, that, that's exactly what happened. They were given a decree to build. And then the king says, no matter what you need, no matter how much money it takes, go do it. Right. Now, I don't know about you, 
But that is pretty good authority, right? Now, let's go on. To have unlimited funds. But that wasn't all. Jerusalem was given back its civil government and its religion to be practiced. Yes. So not only did it, was it funded, its government was reinstituted and its religion was reinstituted to be all back as if they were never in captivity. Continuing, Gabriel declares, and after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself and for the and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the war of desolations are determined. Daniel 9.26 will happen in Adventism. The same thing that happened to the Jewish people will happen to Seventh-day Adventists because they reject what God has given. You see, the city here in Daniel 9.26 Daniel is being told it's going to be rebuilt. Everything's going to be put back. But then God is going to allow it to be destroyed again. Verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for a week. In the midst of the week shall he cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of the abom of abominations he shall make it desolate. Even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured out, poured upon the desolate. you're given responsibility from God to do a work and you allow your human humanity to pervert what God has given you there's only so much God will allow Pages 206 and 207 of Daniel Revelation by Uriah Smith. With the 70 weeks, we are now done. But there remained a longer period and other important events to be considered. The 70 weeks are but the first 490 years of the 2300. You take the 490 from the 2300 remains 1810. The 490, as we have seen, ended in the autumn of AD 34 with the destruction of Christianity's great One of the greatest men that God had appointed through this little church, Stephen. Stephen Stephen was appointed as a deacon and then as the de deacon above all the deacons. He preached his heart out. And as he died, he said, Father, forgive them. His blood 
seal everything of the Israelite people. And 26 years, 36 years later, though Jerusalem was destroyed by the Roman army, not one Christian lost their life. Amen. Amen. Probation closed A.D. 34. Destruction happened many years later. Everything will be repeated. Everything will be repeated. If to this day we now add the remaining 1810 years, we shall have the termination of the whole period. And thus to AD 34, autumn, add 1810 years and we have the autumn of 1844. Thus speedily and surely we do find that the termination of the 2300 days that when once the 70 weeks have been located. One other point we should make and be noticed right here. We have seen that the 70 weeks are the first 490 days of the 2300. That these days are prophetic signifying literal years according to the Bible rule a day for a year Amen. as is proved by the fulfillment of the 70 weeks mm -hmm. and as all reliable expositors agree that they commenced in 457 BC and ended in AD 1844 mm -hmm. provided the number is right and the 2300 is right is correct reading should we not understand the light of the chart? As we understand the 2300 days has ended in 1844. There is much understanding that is brought into this. You have Constantine accepting Sunday and establishing Sunday as the Sabbath of the Roman. You have paganism taken away in 508. The papacy set up in 538. In 538, Vigilus, the appointed pope, who was really a pagan, placed a death decree in 538 against anyone who did not worship on Sunday. But because the papacy, though how strong it was, could not kill anyone as predicted in the Bible they would be able to do. Time goes through the dark ages. The first woe begins with the Muslim. The second woe begins. The Reformation. Papal supremacy does what? End, End in 17 what? 98. 98. Nowhere in scripture is the papacy ever brought back to supremacy again. Because they failed to do what Satan wanted them to do. Satan will now have another power to do what even the papacy cannot do. And in 1844, the ending of the 2300 days, the third woe begins. And as the first woe and the second woe is, has to do with the Muslim, the third woe also has to do with the Muslim.
And Ryan Smith writes as he finishes the quotation, at the ending of the 2300 days in 1844, he says, with this point established, there would seem to be no room for further controversy. It is now, right now, we can know without reservation the connection of this prophecy, prophecy rightly understood brings the opening to the antitypical Day of Atonement. Amen. Therefore, Therefore, there must be a prophecy that brings its closure. Sure. Let's yes. go back to the map, the chart. Oops. I guess I messed up. Oh, there you go. God clearly def defined everything through these 2,300 days. Every bit of it. From Constantine, from the papacy, from paganism being removed from the papacy being set up. The first woe, the second woe, reformation began. All of this stuff God foretold. Mm -hmm. Nothing he left out. Sure. Because he wanted to make sure that when we got to 1844, that the Day of Atonement we knew was going to begin. Amen. What did Amos say? God will do what? Nothing without what? Revealing, Revealing first to his Speech prophets. Servants of prophet. To ignore this fact, God has laid out clearly, prophetically, when the Day of Atonement was to begin. To ignore the very prophetic prophecy which God has given for us to know the very time when the Day of Atonement is to close. Should we not listen and move accordingly? For to ignore is to be also become easily able to reject that which it is not Then, with rejection of God's authority, there's only one reward, and that is eternal death. Daniel, I didn't put this in my notes, but the Lord said to go there, so I'm going to go. Daniel was asking the Lord, Lord, what's going on here? He had been given in Daniel 11, which James White said was a literal prophecy. Everything was laid out. And then Daniel was given. In Daniel 12, 1. And at that time, Michael shall stand up. Mm -hmm. yeah. The great prince who stands, standeth for who? His people. Thy children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble as what? This world has never seen. John, the revelator, is clear that when Jesus says, He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. When that proclamation is done, that is the end of the day of atonement. And 
the vials of of God's vengeance and wrath against the wicked are poured out without mercy. It's two of the same. It is the close of probation. Amen. Amen. And if we do not understand and understand how and what is being transpiring as the close of the probation is coming, We will call light darkness and darkness light. There are Seventh-day Adventists today that are saying that the fulfillment of Daniel 12, 1 is the papacy. <laughs> and it is not. When you make the papacy the king of the north, you know what you got to do? I'm going to tell you what you got to do. You got to go to Revelation 13 and rip it out of your Bible because you don't believe it. Don't you tell me you believe in Revelation 13 if you think the king of the north is the papacy. Because Revelation 13 is clear. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, having two horns, like a lamb, and spake as a dragon. This power gives life to the image of the beast. It is the image of the beast that, in verse 15, he, the two-horned beast, had power to give life to the image, to the beast. The papacy cannot give life to the image of the beast. Only the United States government. Yeah. Amen. Yes, yes. Only the United States government can power to the image of the beast. And the image of the beast isn't the papacy either. Get this right. That the image of the beast should both speak and to cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be what? Killed. Killed. The papacy has nothing to do with end time prophecy. Get it right. Because you're not an Adventist if you don't. He... The image of the beast causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads that no man might buy or sell, save he have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. It is the image of the beast that has the final power to make the whole world worship after the beast. America. The civil government of the United States will unite with apostate Protestantism to force the world to worship on Sunday. Yes. And Roman Catholicism will say, when we go back there and say, you're doing a great job, just keep it up, because I can't do it, but you can. Mm -hmm. The papacy has no power in this world, but they're back there being a cheerleader. You're doing great, guys. Just keep it up. And Adventists are looking at the papacy, the papacy this, the papacy this, the papacy this, the papacy that. And the Bible has nothing to do with the papacy right now. And while you're looking at the papacy, the United States is going fast and furious. Oh, yes. Doing exactly what God said they're going to do. Amen. So what are you going to do? You're going to believe the Bible or you're going to rip the, rip the pages out of the Bible? Because you don't have a choice. I'm sick and tired of these so-called present truth ministers preaching about the papacy this, the papacy this, the papacy this, and they haven't said a thing. Save the 
but what the Bible actually teaches. And they that have an ear. We're going to get about our Father's business, folks. God says, are you looking at this and looking at that? I remember in 1999, I had just gotten through preaching in an old church in Parsons, Tennessee. And this young man, he came in, he was visiting with uh, his entourage. And we were eating lunch, and he was sitting right across from me. And he said, the world is going to end on December 31st, 1999 at midnight. Because all the computers are going to go dead. And the whole infrastructure of the entire world is going to collapse. And I told him, I said, sir, I says, I serve a bigger God than you. I said, I know my God's bigger than that. Because I had a computer that was dead. And I prayed all night. I said, Lord, everything that I have for my business to serve you is on that computer, and I cannot get it back unless you revive it. The technician says it's going to cost me $4,000 to get the data off of this computer, but if I can just get it turned on one time, Lord, I can get all the data off of it. And I looked him straight in the face and I said, the next morning I went back to my office and I prayed. I says, Lord, I said, I'm going to press the on button and I know you can turn it on. Okay. I told him, brother, my computer, it came on and it came on long enough for me to download all the data that I had stored for all the people I worked for. It cost me nothing because my God is bigger than a computer. And if my God is big enough to fix my computer, he's big enough to fix every computer to keep this world going. Because the fact of the matter is, God said he's the one that's going to destroy it, not some dumb computer. Amen. And then I turned to him and I said, brother, when was the last time you gave a Bible study to save somebody? from the wickedness of this world. And he ran out of the church saying, it's too late for Bible study. It's too late. It's too late. This is 17 years later. Yes, Jesus. Let us be seeking the lost. And let God do what he said he's going to do. Yeah. Know what this says. Know what God has given us. And seek the lost, or you will be lost. Right. Let us stand and say.
put him to die. Are you seeking the lost or living a profession? It's time we wake up to be given skill, to be given understanding. Amen. Not from man, but from God himself. Amen. Let us kneel and commit ourselves to his authority. <clears throat> Merciful and gracious Father, we humbly bow before Thee, whether it be here in this house or in the homes and places around the world that are listening to my voice. Lord, You have promised that You will do nothing without revealing it. Help us as your people to stop putting our own interpretations and, and ideologies and traditional ways of thinking into our theology. Yes. Let us demand to have the theology that you established for. For it is the only safe ground to be on, Amen. the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Amen. Forgive us as a people, for we surely have been in insubordination to your throne for far too many generations. You've longed to bring your people home to the married supper of your son, Jesus. And we have loved being in Babylon. We've loved being in Egypt. We've loved being in this world of sin. And we do not want, we act like we do not want to go home. Lord, with your Holy Spirit, impress upon your sincere children the need of being homesick for heaven. To put heaven as the priority and not a secondary thought. Lord, help us. Strengthen us. Magnify and glorify thy name for thy people's sake. Lift us up and set us as we surrender to thee. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah.